It was the second century BC, the Shunga period in Indian art. Great Buddhist stupas were being made at Bharut and Sanchi in Madhya Pradesh. Motifs and traditions which were to prevail in Indian art were being established. In the meantime, another great chapter of art was opening in Western India. For over a thousand years from the second century BC onwards, more than 1,200 caves were excavated out of the mountains of the Western Ghats. This tradition may have been inspired by the caves excavated in the third century BC by Emperor Ashok and his grandson Dashratha at Barabar in present-day Bihar. Those were made for the Ajivikas, who were a deeply ascetic sect. While secular buildings were made of ephemeral materials like wood, that which was made in service to the Eternal was carved in the heart of the mountain itself. The first phase of prolific excavation was from the 2nd century BC till the 3rd century AD. Great Buddhist prayer halls and viharas for the residence of monks were made under the rule of the Satvahanas and the Kshatrapas. Though these kings revered Hindu deities, they patronized all religious establishments. Individual sculptures and pillars were donated by merchants, bankers, gardeners, farmers, fishermen, housewives and others, including many who were Greek. These cave sanctuaries were all made on the caravan routes, which came from central India to the ports on the coast of Maharashtra. Perhaps it was the great prosperity on account of flourishing trade which made possible this era of magnificent rock-cut caves. Trade networks, both internal and with the Mediterranean, were expanding fast in this period. The Roman historian Pliny the Elder writes in 77 BC that Roman coffers were being emptied for buying too many fine textiles from India. At Bhaja, facing the valley of the Indriani River in Pune district, are 22 rock cut caves. The Chetagrehe or prayer hall here was made in the 2nd century BC. Chetya means an object of worship. The stupa deep inside continues as the focus of devotion. The mortal relics of the Buddha had been enshrined in a number of stupas. For Buddhists, the stupa became the symbol of his passage from the world of illusion and pain to that of eternal bliss. A horseshoe-shaped arch dominates the facade of the cave. The shape was first made in imitation of wooden architecture in the Barabar caves. Soon it was to be a pan-Indian motif. The scale of the hall is impressive. Pillars which run along the walls of the cave provide a circumambulatory passage around the stupa. The pillars lean inwards in imitation of wooden architecture. Above, wooden ribs have actually been added to copy the appearance of free-standing buildings. 
Among the viharas here, cave number 18 is remarkable. On the right wall of the veranda are sculptural representations identified as Hindu deities. One shows a royal figure driving a chariot through the skies. The horses trample underfoot a large, misshapen, demonic figure. This may be the earliest surviving depiction of Surya representing the sun, who vanquishes the demon of darkness. The panel on the right has been identified by some as the earliest known depiction of Lord Indra, who rides an elephant. As in other reliefs of the Shunga period, the carving here is not very deep. The style is very similar to the molded terracottas of this period. As with other early Indian sculpture, these would originally have been covered with plaster and painted. In a secluded gorge of spectacular natural beauty, about 50 kilometers northwest of Aurangabad, are the caves of Pital Kora. Part of the hill face has disintegrated and the fronts of the caves have been lost. However, what remains shows that caves three and four here may have been the crowning glory of Buddhist art when they were made in the late second century BC. Paintings of the sixth and seventh centuries AD in the Chetya Hall, Cave 3, show that the cave remained in use for at least 800 years. The conception of the entrance of Cave 4 is grand. It is as if the weight of the cave rests on the backs of life-sized elephants which have been made in the plinth. Above the entrance was made Lakshmi, embodying abundance. She is also depicted often in the railings and gateways of the contemporaneous stupas at Bharhut and Sanchi. On either side we pass two well-executed Dwarpalas, or guardians of doorways. They are life-sized and appear wide-eyed and filled with youthful vigour. Among the many sculptures that have been found at the site is a grinning gunner, a dwarf, as is seen at Sanchi. An inscription states that he was the donation of a goldsmith, Kanhadas, which means servant of Krishna, the Hindu deity. At Betsa, on the south face of the same range of hills as the Bhaja Caves, is another magnificent site of excavations. The Grand Chetyagraha is partly hidden from the profane world outside by a large section of the rock which has been left. In the Indic tradition, that which is important is always kept away from the glare of common sight. We have to make an effort to gain the joy and peace to be found inside. This magnificent Chetyagraha was made in the first century AD. These are the earliest seen pillars rising out of Purnaghatas, or vases of plenty. From now on, this becomes a common motif of Indic art. On the pillar capitals, we see animals with riders, as are seen in the contemporaneous Sanchi stupa gateways in central India. 
It is a vision in which men, women and animals are in harmony with each other and the world around. The figures are self-assured. Side walls of the veranda have horseshoe-shaped arches, commonly termed as chetya arches. The interior, dimly lit by the jali window in the front, is simple, leaving behind the profusion of images and sculptures the heart of the mountain contains the stupa. The pillars around it and in the hall are plain. The devotee has travelled from the world of illusory shapes outside to be closer to the truth in all its simplicity. A small group of caves was excavated in the 1st century BC, overlooking the stream of Ulhas at Kondavane near Karjak. Despite its ruined state, the magnificent facade of the Chetyagraha exhilarates the visitor. The figures made here are delicately modelled and are graceful. There is a sense of natural ease in the depictions of these times. The men and women express emotions with freedom and warmth, not often seen in later representations. Next to the Chetyagraha is an impressive and spacious Vihara. The ceiling has an elaborate imitation of a network of beams and rafters. On a high hill opposite the range which has the caves of Bhaja, a grand Chetyagraha and Viharas were created in the 1st to 2nd centuries AD at Karle. This is the largest of all Chetyagrahas to be carved out of the living rock. One must remember that these magnificent Chetyagrahas are not architecture really, but sculpture on an epic scale. For the Indian artist, the rock contains, in its heart, the divine. It is for him to but remove that which hides the image from our sight, to reveal the sacred nature of the hill. One can imagine how vast the task must have been to create such rock-cut shrines. The cutting of the rock began from top to bottom and front to back, creating the spaces and leaving stone for pillars to be shaped later. Even as the stone was hewn to create the structures, the finishing of the walls and the carving of detailed sculpture was taken up. As at Betsa, the facade of the cave is mainly hidden from the mundane world by a rock-cut screen. A recent shrine today further blocks the view. Outside the courtyard were two columns, of which one remains. On the side walls of the veranda are made large elephants, continuing the tradition seen at Pital Kora. The facade has on it six couples, larger than life and filled with robust vitality. These are the yakshas and yakshis who embody abundance and fertility of nature. The forces that ensure the continuity of life. They were seen individually in the gateways of the stupas of Bharhut and Sanchi. Here they have come together as mithunas or loving couples. 
Their closeness to each other in natural affection symbolizes the completeness of the world, of the harmony of the natural order. These are idealized human forms, presenting the symbolic essence of human life at its most vital. They graphically display the quality of prana, or the inner breath of Indian art. The Grand Hall is 124 feet by 46 feet and rises to a height of 45 feet. The pillars along the sides have Purn ghatas, or vases of plenty. The capitals have seated animals carrying human figures. The ones facing the central passage are superbly rendered elephants. Each carries two onlookers, usually a couple and sometimes two women. They are seated in a friendly embrace and display a rare warmth. Inscriptions record the names of numerous individual donors who paid for the carving of various parts of the cave and its pillars. Worship continued at the site for at least 400 years, and there are later sculptures of the Vakataka period. There are many small rock cut caves on four hills close to Junnar in Pune district. These were excavated from the 1st century BC till the 3rd century AD. There are several viharas here, of which the largest is on Suleiman Hill. To the vihara's left is a Chetyagraha with an inscription of the 2nd century AD. It was the gift of a resident of Kalyana. Within the Borivili National Park in Mumbai, is the Buddhist cave site of Kanheri. It provides a view of developments in Buddhist art for a thousand years from the first century AD onwards. The Chetyagraha Cave 3 was excavated in the reign of King Satkarni in the second century AD. It has a courtyard with a rock-cut fence. Like Karle, it has two pillars in front. One pillar has a representation of the Buddha, the earliest one in Western India. The style of the figures here has similarities with the contemporaneous sculpture of the Mathura region of North India. The men and women have the sense of the breath and the movement of life. They display individual postures and have gentle expressions. Colossal Buddhas, who are later additions to the Chetyas, are of the 5th or the 6th century. Later caves at this site present the pantheon of deities in the subsequent period of Buddhism. About a hundred kilometers from Aurangabad, in a horseshoe-shaped gorge of the Vaghora River, are 31 rock-cut caves at the magnificent site of Ajanta. The caves were excavated in two phases, one around the 2nd century BC and the second around the 5th and 6th centuries AD. Cave 10 is the earliest Chetyagraha here and was made in the 2nd century BC. It has many similarities with other excavations of that period. The murals here are thrilling to see, as they are the earliest surviving paintings of the historic period in India. There are also paintings here which were made about 
800 years later. Cave 9 is a Chetyagraha of the 1st century. The facade has figures of the Buddha which were added in the later period. In the meantime, in the 1st century BC, near the east coast of India, Jaina rock cut caves were being excavated by King Karavela in Orissa. These depict the pan-Indian spread of ideas and motives at that time. The Rani Gumpha, or cave, is the largest and most elaborate excavation. The courtyard and two stories of cells provide a view similar to the much later Buddhist caves at Ellora in western India. A new feature seen here are brackets incorporating figures. These were to become prolific in later Indian art. The arches above doorways imitate wooden forms and are similar to the arches seen at Buddhist Chetyagrahas of this period. There are narrative friezes sculpted at the entrance to the cells. These are deeply cut and present the sense of the overflowing abundance of the world, which was seen at contemporaneous Sanchi. The headdresses, ornaments and the style of the figures is also very similar to that of the Sanchi Toranas or gateways. In the Shunga and Satvahana periods, were formulated the themes and traditions of Indian art. There was a common artistic tradition and the same motifs in Buddhist and Jain art. These included Yakshas, Yakshis and the deity Lakshmi. While stupas with sculpted railings and gateways were made in central India, Great rock-cut caves were excavated in the hills of western and eastern India. The exteriors had images of the life of nature. Deep in the silence of the mountain was simplicity itself. A symbolic representation of the escape from the illusions of the material world.